In this video, I'm going to share with you the process by which someone becomes an MS neurologist. If you'd like to know what it takes to become a specialist in the field of MS, tune in because I'm going to share that with you starting right now. Howdy! Learn about multiple sclerosis with me, Aaron Boster. I started to make these videos to help my patients learn in between clinic visits. And it's my hope that I can help teach you as well. In this video, we're going to discuss the tract or educational path it takes to become a multiple sclerosis neurologist or an MS specialist, sometimes referred to as an MSologist or a clinical neuroimmunologist. If you would like to learn more about multiple sclerosis, if you're impacted by the condition or you want to up your game, please make sure to subscribe to this channel right now by clicking the subscription button. And also, click that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. A multiple sclerosis specialist is most commonly a neurologist that has gone on to do extra training to focus in on neuroinflammation in the brain and spinal cord. In this video, I'm going to share with you the path it takes, the educational trajectory, to become an MS specialist. I'll use my training as an example. For starters, we attend a university or college following high school. And in college, we'll focus most commonly on some form of uh, scientific study. I personally went to Oberlin College, and I was lucky to be able to do a double major in neuroscience and in psychology. I also took a lot of biochemistry. During the course of your undergraduate, you have to complete all the prerequisite classes necessary to matriculate into medical school. This involves taking physics, chemistry, biology. It also involves taking some math and some English. Lastly, in preparation for entering into medical school, you take an entrance exam, which here in the United States is called the MCAT. I'll also add that many students find that it helps enrich their application and more importantly their understanding of medicine to participate in extracurriculars like volunteerism. I spent a tremendous amount of time volunteering at The Ohio State University in the psych ward, uh, in the hospital waiting rooms, in the morgue. I also spent a couple summers in a research laboratory uh, studying neuropharmacology and doing experiments under supervision. Step two on the path to becoming an MS specialist is medical school. Now, I went to a traditional four-year medical school, University of Cincinnati in Southern Ohio. The first two years of education are mostly book work, studying things and taking tests. And the first year uh, typically encompasses learning about the healthy human body, physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, and so on and so forth. The second year of coursework starts to explore uh, pathologic states, taking courses in pathology, pharmacology, etc. After the first two years of medical school, things change quite substantially. The third and fourth year are clinically oriented. There's no more classrooms and you spend time on the hospital wards in various subspecialties. In the third year, you do what we call the big three. And this is several months of internal medicine, so learning about sick adults, pediatrics, and several months doing general surgery. During your fourth year of med school, you have an opportunity, amongst other experiences, to do electives. And as you can imagine, I used my electives to do extra work in neurology, and in physiatry, physical medicine, which in my opinion is a close cousin of neurology. Step three on the pathway to become an MS specialist is to attend a neurology residency program. After medical school, you match into a residency program where the first year involves studying internal medicine. So I spent an entire year at the University of Michigan up in Ann Arbor doing internal medicine. In other words, taking care of sick adults. This had no neurology in it. It was things like GI, cardiology, pulmonology, general internal medicine, intensive care. And it prepared me to then specialize in year two, three, and four. The next three years of neurology residency are only done in neurology. And it's not focused on multiple sclerosis. It covers all of neurology, strokes, neuro-oncology, neuromuscular conditions, pediatric neurology, some MS, and a multitude of other conditions. It's during your residency that you transition from a medical student into a budding neurologist. Step four on the path to become an MS specialist is fellowship training. 
You have done undergraduate to prepare you for medical school. You've done medical school to prepare you for residency in general neurology. Now the last step is to sub-sub-specialize into one narrow field of neurology. In my case, neuroimmunology or multiple sclerosis. I chose to do a two-year residency at Wayne State University where I had the honor to train under two amazing men, Drs. Omar Khan and Bob Lissack. My two years were spent seeing multiple sclerosis patients in clinic and in the hospital. My time was spent also learning clinical trial design and statistics and how to run clinical research to answer relevant clinical questions. A lot of my education also included studying neuroimaging and advanced MRI techniques. The fellowship, uh, honestly, is a lot like an apprenticeship where you are working directly with an MS expert and learning the craft. There you have it. The educational trajectory for someone to become a multiple sclerosis neurologist or MS specialist, or as I like to call it, MSologist or clinical neuroimmunologist. The track to become a specialist who takes care of people impacted by multiple sclerosis. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this quick didactic. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and I would love to hear comments and questions. Was this information new to you? Until next time, take care.